Can you hear me? I can also hear you. But not everyone in the world is as lucky as we are. Think about that five-year-old girl who came to the hospital with the complaints of fever. The doctor treated her with an antibiotic. Fever subsided quickly, but now she cannot hear. The ENT doctor came, did a surgery, put a cochlear implant. She can hear again. Everyone is happy. But after a few years, this same girl came to the hospital because she cannot hear anymore. What is happening here? This is the question that I'm trying to address as a PhD student. Let me first explain how we hear. As I'm talking to you, sound waves enter into the ear and goes to the inner ear and stimulates the auditory receptor cell that we call hair cells. Hair cells generate an electrical signal that is then sent to the brain via the auditory nerve. Various toxins, including some antibiotics, can destroy the hair cells, causing deafness. Good news is we can put a cochlear implant that will replace the auditory function of the hair cells, and the person can hear again. But here is the bad news. After destruction of the hair cells, auditory neurons die over time, leading, leaving the cochlear implant disconnected from brain. Why these neurons die? We did a screening test in our lab that showed that after deafening, there is significant inflammation in the ear. We hypothesized that this inflammation is neurotoxic. And if we can prevent this inflammation, we can protect these neurons. We decided to use a very simple over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medicine, ibuprofen. <laughs> In animal model, ibuprofen could protect the neurons. The conclusion from this research is deafness-induced neuroinflammation is neurotoxic. And if we can prevent this inflammation, we can protect the neuron. Our research has profound public health significance. 30 million Americans have hearing impairment, making it the most common sensory abnormality. If we can protect the neuron with a very simple medicine, we can potentially improve the quality of life of millions of people. Even more importantly, this research will open a window through which we will be able to see the world of neuroimmune interaction that is still very obscure. Thank you. <laughs>